Neil Sika, TV voice of your Columbus crew going to the MLS final tomorrow. Welcome to the inaugural Brian's Burn Barrel of the Apocalypse. I am honored, and this is very suitable for me. It's a new definition, Brian, of the hot seat. <laughs> well, Bad jokes. Cheers well, to you. Cheers to you, my yes. friend. Uh, so the coffee, I learned how to make it this way when I was a kid. We did a lot of backpacking, and what you do is you bring like a big Folgers can with you, hook it on your backpack, and then when you get to the campsite, you boil some water, you throw a handful of coffee grounds in there and let it boil all good, like an hour on the fire or whatever. Then you take it off, you throw some cold river water in there, all the grounds sink to the bottom, and you have delicious coffee. So I'm, I'm putting my Boy Scout skills to good use. If I'm ever leading a Cub Scout troop, now I know, and we'll be in good shape. Yeah, the, what you want is a bunch of 11-year-old boys drinking a bunch of coffee around the fire. <laughs> Well, it's good to see you. It's been a while. About it's nine months. Yeah. Should I say it feels like two years because it's in vogue in this yeah, 2020? Yeah, well, I don't know. Time time is a construct that has no meaning anymore. I mean, this crew season started March 1st, and here we are right. tomorrow, December 12th. Uh, during this nine months, I don't know about you, but I've missed live music like you can't believe. And I know 100%. I see you at concerts. Yeah. What's the last concert you went to? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. It might have been, it might have been the Foo Fighters set at Mafre during the Sonic Temple Festival and whatever it's called now. Oh well, that was, that was so like it was a year a and a half ago. Yeah, <laughs> I might have seen some stuff in a, in a smaller venue, but right. it's been so long that usually I'm so quick to the trigger That's and remembering right. that, and I can't. Well, that's not a bad concert memory. It's not. Foo it's Fighters. a great rock show. Oh, I saw Angela Purley. Oh, yeah. Too long oh yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. One of those outdoor shows. At oh, Natalie's, yeah. She's wonderful. She's, she's great. Wonderful. Fantastic. We love her. So um, you haven't traveled at all, have you, with the team? You do everything I in have studio? Not. Yeah. yeah, we've been in studio in Cleveland for our road games, which is normally how we operate anyway. That's goofy that you have to drive to Cleveland. It is funny. <laughs> it is funny that Fox has their arms in Cleveland and Cincinnati. But for all the other sports that needed to adapt – Major League Baseball, the NBA, so many of them doing games out of the studio. MLS, hey, that's old hat for us. So we've sure. been doing it for years. Sure. <laughs> um, going up to Cleveland and then on site at the stadium, which has been nice, especially during this playoff run because yeah. all the games have been at home. Well, normally it would be a circus atmosphere tomorrow oh. night. Uh, I remember five years ago, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. I have a question about five years ago that pertains to tomorrow night, but – First, we got to talk about Pedro and Nagby. It was when did you learn of this? It was it was well into the night last night, huh? It was crushing uh, to hear that news for those guys because you feel for them. Yeah, because everyone's worked so hard, and for the team to bout with COVID like they have in the playoffs is, I guess, even more impressive. Just with the adversity they dealt with all season long, they had the game against Orlando postponed, and now in the most crucial games of the season, they're they're dealing with this, and now two players that are pretty high on the list of ones you'd consider needing to be <laughs> uh, in the fire there tomorrow against the Sounders is is tough. But Caleb Porter is, is one heck of a coach, and I'm sure he's dialing up what he needs to get it done. But as far as learning about it, there was talk about Nagby, who was on the media call yesterday, and they moved him to Friday. Uh -huh. And initially, though, they didn't put that out. So they just had put Artur in his place. So you were thinking, uh-oh, they had announced the COVID positive two days ago. What's going on? But then you see Nagby's name. But it turned out to be who I believe is Pedro. And then Nagby came down yesterday. So uh, I found out around 6 o'clock when everyone else did when Ugh. media sent out the game notes. Well, that, so just to, number one, we don't, I mean, it's not, a, they're not telling us who has it and who doesn't. Yeah, right. it's but interesting. There are, there are different policies for different teams. The crew have gone by the calling of not medically cleared to play, yep. but a, a process of elimination, people have figured that out here in the playoffs. Seattle, who's had two COVID positives with Rui Diaz back in October, came out and said it right away. Gustav Svensson, who had the game-winning goal against Minnesota, uh, missed the first two games of the playoffs. They mentioned that he had COVID. So it just each team's handling it differently. So there's no chance they're going to play. 
Well, in theory, if you could, if they're asymptomatic, right, and they could test negative twice, one being the Friday, the day before the game, and then Saturday, but it just depends on the results. I think it's highly unlikely at this point. Yeah. Just based on that window of time. Room, NTN are back. They are back. Okay, that's good. We're going to need them. So uh, with with Nagby and Pedro out, mm -hmm. who slots in, do you think? Well, that's the big question. That's the million-dollar question, especially in the midfield and dealing with the attack that Seattle has, the midfield that they have with Ladero, who's one of the best players in the league, and Shao Paulo has been a great addition for them, Jordan Morris. Yeah. I think it's the kid. I think you go with the kid, Aiden Morris. I think the way he played – in the back half of the season, in Nagby's absence. I, people know how important Nagby is, but when he didn't play this year with the knee injury, the crew were 3-3-2, three, three, and two, mm -hmm. and they beat some pretty good teams in that process, mm -hmm. including New York City, where mm -hmm. I thought Morris was excellent. It's a big moment for him. He can be a little bit of a swashbuckler. If he's in the game, <laughs> you don't want to see a yellow card within the first 15 minutes. But they've relied on the guys who have been up to the challenge, and as young as he is after one year at Indiana, where he was the big man on campus... I think he's likely to get the the spot there tomorrow. He has the look. He has no fear. He does. I've seen him make some tackles this year where, you know, if your timing is off by a split second, it is a yellow card, and he's been able to pull those off and, and pull some nice heists on the on the field. He, he doesn't lack for confidence at no, all. No, he doesn't. And I think there was a growing process there. Caleb Porter, being an Indiana guy himself, was very hard on him in the preseason. It took him some time to adapt. Sebastian Berhalter was getting uh, – probably his minutes at the start of the year and and Seabass as they call him has, has been great I think that's the thing about this team they've relied on depth when they've had to deal with all these guys out with Lucas out and Nagby out at different times it's I hate using the term next man up but that's that's what it's been they've come in and they've played and done the job and put them in a position to, to win a championship and it'll be no different tomorrow and I think having gone through the adversities that they've had already will, will help them even in this situation do you see Caleb changing tactically at all, given the guys missing, or is he just going to, hey, let's let's just roll with our game plan? Yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, Seattle likes to have the ball. The crew like to have the ball, too, if they're going to sit back and be a little bit more conservative in their defending and then look to get out in transition. That's one thing. But you still have your number 10. You can still possess through, through Lucas. Mm -hmm. And I think the way our tour has played in these playoffs mm -hmm. and his more advanced role – I think it's still all systems go with the way they want to play. It's just, you know, will Morris, if he is the guy, up for the big moment. And you feel good about Mensa and Josh Williams in the middle and the back. I thought the other day against New England, that was the best game Josh Williams has ever had. I, I think he's been excellent. And I think Mensa and him, even going back to 2017 when they were the guys down the stretch run to get to the Eastern Conference Championship, uh, he's really come into his own as someone you can depend on. He's comfortable on the ball. He's maybe their best weapon on set pieces, too. And you, it's interesting you bring up the, the set piece or the center backs. Uh, my colleague, uh, Jordan Angeli, who's been great, uh, thinks that's a key matchup tomorrow, all things being equal before the news about Nagby and Santos. Because Seattle's been sketchy and up and down with, with some of their center back play this year. Shane O'Neill uh, didn't jump on that free kick goal against Minnesota. And uh, I know he had a goal against Dallas. But they've rotated a few guys, and Brian Schmetzer's tried to find the right combination. So there is a possibility there that – Ever since Chad Marshall retired, I don't think they've ever hit the, the right footnotes, even though they won the title last year. Yeah, well, it's a great team. What's the one guy on Seattle that you can't let beat you? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I mean, you, Ladero is, is the metronome, right? He's Iguain and Zellerayan all wrapped up into one. He had the most touches in the league. I think if you cut him off, like the crew did with Carlos Heel and New England, uh, in the Eastern Conference Final, they're going to have a pretty good shot because that's the outlet for everything else. For Morris, Rui Diaz is a killer up top. He's got nine goals in nine playoff games. So there's not just one guy, but if you're going to take away the heartbeat, uh, I like their chances a little bit more than isolating the other guys like Morris and Rui Diaz. So I do the Mass Report podcast with the fellows at MassReport.com. I know you've been on there before. Great we were talking about this the other night, Yeah, and I don't know if it's still true, but – are we getting the same referee crew that we had for the 2015 MLS Cup final against Portland? That's what we heard. Yeah, you know what? I have it on my um, in my game notes. I think that's right. Ugh, why? That, that was a terrible crew. That the 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 non-call out of bounds that led directly to one of Portland's goals. Yeah, 
I was right there in Nordic. The ball was three well, feet at, out of bounds. At, it's live and in the moment, so why don't I look it up and confirm? All right. Give me a, sc- give me a score for tomorrow. Do you like to predict games, or are you a- agnostic about I felt about really that? good at all week. As long as the crew have been playing at home, I've gone with them, and I'll still, cha- I'll still do that tomorrow, even in the absence of Nagby and Santos. I'll say 2-1 in extra time. That's ex- You read my mind. It may go to penalties, which we don't want to see. No, we don't want that. <laughs> I, don't, and, I and don't want to see that, but I could see it happening. Look, Aloy Room may be back, but Stephen Fry single-handedly won Seattle a cup in 2016 without a shot on goal. Yeah. <laughs> they won in penalties. So yeah. uh, I know you, coming from the Pacific Northwest and being such a big crew fan as you are, this game deserves – the audience that it's not going to have in person because yeah. it's just going to be spectacular. And I'll be thinking a lot about Ziggy Schmidt, the late Ziggy Schmidt. Oh, too. yeah. God love him. Uh, a legend in with both clubs. And it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a fun match. Uh, I, I wish we could be there, but but it's going to be fun to watch on TV. Uh, one of my friends on the podcast is going to go. He hasn't left his home in like nine months and he has like one of those N95 masks that he found somewhere. <laughs> so he's going. So uh, yeah, Jair God, Marufo, God by the, the way, is the going. referee. Yeah, God bless them too. And uh, it is, you know, they followed the protocols very well at Montfrey Stadium, and with the 1,500 fans that they had during the regular season, they didn't have them for the first two playoff games. Brought them back for New England. It it does make a difference to the players. It really does. Well, to have I know an and, atmosphere and there. Just to see them, thank the crowd, wise men say all that stuff, mm-hmm. and still do it. It's a little the eerie the when they sing it to. Yeah, but it it's, gives you chills, right? Gold-plated bleachers. Yes, it does. It yeah. does. And the hope is as everything comes out with the vaccinations and, you know, the optimism of the spring and the summer, it's going to be a backloaded home schedule next year when the new digs open, and it's going to be incredible. Yeah, I drive by the stadium every day and just look and go, wow. Now it's it's looking like a stadium now. It does. Our baby yeah. is <laughs> with the roof. taking form. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a fun year next year. The vaccine's coming. Better days ahead. Better and, days and by ahead. the way, uh, you don't have to do it right now, but we'd like to shake you down for a, a song request for the Andy Manathon. So just I want to see your name pop up on my list sometime this weekend, Neil Sika. Absolutely. You buy a song. What would you buy? If I would buy a song, gosh, how about, um, how about Hey Now by Oasis? I like it. That's a beautiful song. Yeah. Great choice. You have wonderful taste. Thank you, Neil. Have fun tomorrow. Coming from humble beginnings, Brian, I, it's, it's been an honor to be your first guest, and we can look back on these days uh, next year when we're having a good time at the new and stadium. And it, it keeps you warm, right? I love it. I love well, it. Well, between what's is... in your cup and the burn <laughs> some barrel good morning sauce, I must say. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I know how to make a mean cup of campfire coffee. <laughs> well, Neil Sika, thank you so much for coming down. We did this safely. Thank Brian, you. pleasure. Great to see you, and Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, sir. Good and to be same a part to of you. All right, go crew. Cheers, mate. Cheers.